On ABC Radio Sydney, this is Breakfast with Robbie Buck and Wendy Harmer. 18 to 7. Yeah, let's uh, take you to Western New South Wales. The, uh, the news yesterday... Uh, from the United Nations, these 450 scientists who were um, chronicling the huge loss of, uh, of species around the globe and the real call to arms that we need to do something about it. And we thought, well, let's catch up with somebody who works in this field and is doing something about it. And with that in, uh, in mind, we take you to far western New South Wales to uh, hear from senior field ecologist at the Scotia Wildlife Sanctuary. It's good morning to Felicity Lotelia. Hello, Felicity. Morning, Wendy and Robbie. How are you guys we, going? We are very well. Tell us exactly where you are and how big you are. Yep, yep. So um, I work for the Australian Wildlife Conservancy. We're a not-for-profit organisation with properties all across Australia. But the property that I'm based at, Scotia Wildlife Sanctuary, is out in far western New South Wales. So we're about halfway between uh, Mildura uh, and Broken Hill. And we're right out on the South Australian border. Uh, our property is 65,000 hectares in size. So we're talking about a fairly big chunk of land there. See, I've seen it equated to 26,000 MCGs, about the, <laughs> about the size of the whole Sydney basin, I believe. Quite a lot. How, how many swimming pools is that? Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, different measurement. <laughs> they haven't got much rain. Yeah, yeah. No, so, okay, and tell us the, uh, the philosophy behind this and, and how it operates. Yeah, so um, for, for AWC more broadly, um, our mission is the effective conservation of all Australian um, f- fauna species and the habitats in which they live. So to do that, where we acquire properties right across the country or, or go into um, management partnerships, and we're looking to implement um, kind of world-class conservation and land management programs that are really driven by by good science. Mm. Uh, so across. Across those properties, we've established a network of conservation-fenced areas. Uh, So here at Scotia, as part of that broader 65,000 hectares, we've created an 8,000 hectare fenced area. Uh, From within that area, we have removed all feral predators, so there's no cats, no foxes within uh, the 8,000 hectares. And we've reintroduced locally extinct species, so species that are no longer found in the wild uh, beyond fences in, in New South Wales. Um, so, uh, Wendy, I heard you mention before betongs. So we've got um, burrowing betongs, oh. we've got brush tail betongs, we've got the iconic bilby, um, numbats. Just this morning I popped outside and saw a couple of bridal nail tail wallabies. So oh. they're a species that was thought to be extinct for you know quite a number of decades. See, I am... Uh... Absolutely on team marsupial here. I think <laughs> our marsupials are just the wonder of the world and there's yeah. so many of them and they're so varied and they're all gorgeous. Yeah. Never met a marsupial I didn't like. <laughs> so <laughs> you are doing fanta- a fantastic job then. So you've got this fox and cat free um, eight thousand hectares Mm -hmm. and so so what does it what does it take to um, keep the 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 foxes and the cats out the foxes are very wily tell tell us about the fence at some of the dimensions yeah so um here at scotia uh, the the fence it stands about six foot tall Mm -hmm. um so at the very top of the fence we've got some electric wires and an overhang so that prevents anything from being able to climb over the top Mm -hmm. Uh, and at the bottom we've got a skirt of wire preventing anything from digging under Underneath. Um, the fence itself is 56 kilometres in length. Um, now, we're talking about 8,000 hectares here at Scotia. Compare that to some of our up and coming projects out at New Haven Wildlife Sanctuary, northwest of Alice Springs. We've just finished construction, uh, almost finished eradication of an almost 9,500 hectare area out there mm. where we'll be replicating the work that we've done at Scotia. The second stage of that project will increase the total size of that cat and fox free area to over 100,000 hectares. So I've got no idea how many uh, MCGs or or Sydney Harbour that would be. But to really maintain um, these properties, it takes a lot of of effort. yeah, well, we'll get to we'll get to some of that in just a moment. Yeah. I just want about some of your um, uh, the you, you, the organisation, what mm-hmm. you're up to, and how many staff, etc. Yeah. But what what how quickly do those native species bounce back after the ferals are removed? Uh, I, you know, as soon as you remove some of those key threats, um, they they bounce back, they boom back. Um, yeah, they boom. Yeah, it'd be, are you surprised by how quickly it happens? Or? Yeah, and so for Scotia, um, our reintroduction program here really started when um, so AWC took over ownership in 2002. Um, we upgraded the existing fence that had already um, 
begun construction here under um, previous ownership. Um, and, you know, for the next few years, steady increase. We got those boom years of above average rainfall in 2011 and 12, and everything just came to life. Mm. Um, so, you know, clear evidence of that boom bust system. Yeah. Felicity, what does an, an experiment like this teach us about the areas that aren't fenced off? I mean, it's fantastic to have these little arcs, if you like, that mm-hmm. uh, conserve those animals and those species. But of course, if you're talking about the vast expanses of Australia, there are, you know, all these other problems. Yeah. What can it teach us about? The, the future in those areas or dealing with the threats in those areas? Look, the, the number one threat to Australian um, uh, mammals at this moment in time is cats and right. cat predation. Mm-hmm. There's no effective landscape scale control for cats. Uh, so these fences form a really key role uh, in, you know, in the, the future survival of a number of these mammal species that we're talking about. Without these fences, those species would be extinct. Mm. Okay. Um, so they, they form a part of that bigger picture. So in addition to predation by feral cats, we've got predation by foxes. We've got competition with in, introduced herbivores. You know, that's right across the board. Uh, inappropriate fire regimes, weeds. And so that's things that we're tackling right across all of our properties, inside and outside fenced areas. Right. Uh-huh. So uh, tell us just a little bit more about uh, the uh, wildlife sanctuary, the Australian, uh, rather the Australian Wildlife Conservancy. You're yep. privately owned. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, are, are people able to, you're not for profit. Yep. You've been doing this since 2001. And uh, earlier than that, yeah, but at, at Scotia we started in 2000. 2001 in Scotia, yep. I beg your yep. pardon. Yep. So can people get in on the action on this one? Definitely, definitely. And I think considering the findings of the, the report that's just come out, it really um, illustrates how critical the work that AWC is doing. Mm. Um, so this work, as a not-for-profit, it, it's so um, important that we have support of both volunteers and fi- financial supporters. Yep. Um, so I think it, 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 it's a good day to be doing this. Um, but we're actually launching a new campaign today um, where two foundations, um, the JAM Foundation and the Martin Copley Will Trust, have joined forces and they're going to be matching all eligible donations of up to a total of $2 million. Um, wow, so okay. That, you know, if anyone's looking to, to make a contribution, this is a chance to double that contribution. And it's really exciting because it means we can really accelerate um, the work that we're doing to protect these certain species. And uh-huh. in light of that report, we, we just... We can't waste any more time. All right. And, and so is there um, a, a, minimum, a minimum amount one can contribute here? I mean... She's a bit tight, Felicity. It, She's only, <laughs> only got a few dollars. No, but I just wondered, you know, I mean... <laughs> what do you like on the end of a shovel, Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not too bad. But I wonder, are you looking for big donations, yeah, small look, ones? So what are you looking for? As part of this, um, this matching campaign, it's all, elig- all, all eligible donations. So that's anything okay. over 500 dollars yep. um, for um, anyone who's not currently a supporter. Um, but, um, you know, aside from this mat- matching campaign, anyone can assist. So no matter how much or little, whether it's mm. financial contribution or time, um, everyone can get involved and make a really you know, big difference for Australian wildlife. Oh, well, that's a fantastic. And as we say, a really good time if you're having that donation matched. Yeah. Now, I would love to come and visit you and see the, the marsupials there. Mm-hmm. Is that possible? So Scotia is not open to the public. Okay, all right. Um, but there are a number of AWC properties that do have um, visitation. Uh-huh. Um, so you can jump on our website and have a look. All right, good. Um, but, yeah, anything's possible, so, yeah. <laughs> Keep in touch. Keep in loop, Wendy. All she, right, we she will. She can be very persuasive, all I'm right. afraid. All right, thank you. Hey, uh, Felicity, we're really happy that you're doing that work. It's just wonderful yes, after the, the, the doom and gloom of that report yesterday to hear the, the work that you guys are doing is just fantastic. It's good yeah. for the soul. Well done. Keep it up. Thanks, guys. See you, Felicity. See you. Bye-bye.